Aloha! This is Dr. Tiki, writing a prescription for tiki drinks, tattoos, and tech. What could be more fun? It's time for another Strange Love Live. This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. The 1970s ramen company, Nissan Foods, was behind. They were facing bankruptcy. So the president wanted to expand to the US. He brought in a team of people. He said, I need you to create a new product. I want instant ramen in a cup, three minutes, everything in it. All you have to do is add water. Easy, right? OK, but nothing like this had ever been done before. So he brings in this team of people, and they don't know how they're going to do it. Um, and they would have never actually accomplished it if the president didn't have such faith and such confidence in his vision. Hi, welcome to After Hours Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. The video that you just saw was a 30 second clip of Jason Grigsby's talk at Ignite Portland 3 about um, the cup of noodle. And we'll go into that in just a moment with him. But first, I'd like to introduce the lovely Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. How are you doing this evening, Dr. Normal? Oh, I've got my hands full tonight, <laughs> believe me. Okay. Yeah, you know how it is. Let's introduce Jason. Okay. We are joined by Jason Grigsby. Hello, everybody. You can find him at Griggs on Twitter. Yep. Why did you want to do... So this was three nights ago. Yes. It was like last spring, I think. It was the first Ignite I'd ever been to. Oh. I was watching up from the balcony. Gotcha. It was a very entertaining talk. Thank you. Yeah. It was one of the few talks. When you when you walk away, age kind of dulls it, but you remember certain talks from different Ignites, and that was yeah. the one that I, I walked out with that night. That, well, thank you. That stuck in my head. Um, what inspired you to give that talk? Um... First, uh, there have been so many great Ignite presentations, so um, it was, you know, like just an opportunity to do Ignite was really fun. And then, um, because I do a lot of public speaking, but a lot of the public speaking I do is very, um, uh, you know, the format's an hour long, you've got uh, plenty of time to sort of, um, you know, give your opinions and sort of pontificate on whatever you're thinking about and just like ramble, mm -hmm. um, like I'm doing now. Uh, the idea that there was this five minutes and I wanted to try to do something funny um, would be, was really it. And then I was trying to figure out what would be, um, you know, what would be a good thing to do. And the Cup Noodle book is such a great um, comic book. Mm -hmm. And it's the sort of thing that I, you know, after I read it, I passed it on to my wife and she loved it. And then I was passing it on to coworkers. And I'm like, you've got to read this book. I know it's, it's, it's a comic book and it's it's backwards because it's it's you know right to left and it sort of messes with your brain but like seriously work through the book because you will be rewarded both in terms of really funny moments but also a really great story and something that you you know like examining something that you never really thought about in a totally different way so it all came from having read that comic book. Yeah, yeah. And all the graphics are from the, the Japanese comic book as well. Where did you find the comic book? Um, so I heard about it through um, a podcast, a comic book podcast called ifanboy.com. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it on this show, but that actually happens to be my favorite podcast. It's okay to say it. Yeah. We'll, we'll still love you. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Um, so uh, they they were talking about this this comic book about Cup Noodle, and they just sort of just started describing like how you know the story was so compelling, and yet you know these people would be um, you know like 
like in typical Japanese manga style, like they come to decisions, and these, you know, these are actually critical business decisions. But yeah. at the same time, they're 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 drawn in Japanese manga style, so the people are like throwing their fists in the air and like lightning behind them and everything, and it just sounded crazy. So I ordered it off of Amazon um, based on that review, and um, I got the book and read it and loved it. And there are actually three other, there are two other books in the series. Um, mm-hmm. One's about 7-Eleven and one's about um, Dragonfly uh, or um, Dragon Z. I can't remember the name of the Dragon car. Dragon Ball Z? No. Oh, there's a oh, car. The, um, Z the car? Nissan. Nissan Z, oh. I think is the name of the car. Um, I'm not a car person. Do you, do you know so. anything about cars? Morgan? Yeah. Do you have any of this car? Oh, oh the Datsun? The, the Datsun, yeah. The, I think it was uh, the there's Datsun. my mic. The I Datsun uh, Z. Uh, yeah. I think I dated someone Z? who had I think I dated that was someone a classic who had that car. car. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So when they were talking about... Early 70s, I mean, the first Japanese yeah. affordable... It and it's a sort of a car. sporty car. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, yeah I dated someone who had that. That, car. that is okay. that is absolutely the car. So all of these, all of, all of the books in this series are are essentially business case studies, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like I I have very very rarely read a business case study mm-hmm. that was both as enlightening as the cup noodle one was and i know that i've never read one that's as entertaining as the cup noodle one was well it's hard to be enlightened by something when you're reading it because you have to be reading it yeah uh, yeah I guess, I guess that's true yeah yeah but it's um so it's just it's fun and apparently it's out of print now um oh. so or at least in the united states it's really hard to get a copy but it was um that book was nominated for an Eisner because it be, it got sort of a cult following in mm-hmm. um, in comic book circles, and so they nominated it. I don't think it actually won that year, but so you're not just a regular geek; you're also a comic book geek. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, we had a comic book geek last week too. I know Tyler. Yeah, that's uh, I, I tend to like Tyler and I like just ships passing in the night all the time. Have you met Tyler? I've met him, yeah, but okay. um, you know, he spoke after me at Web Visions and I missed his presentation and his you know, presentation last week, was yeah. like the only one that I had a chance. I like snuck away. I, I was like, Oh, I need to go and listen to the comic book talk. I know, I know. And I I managed I think fifteen minutes of it maybe. Yeah. The other person who um I, I keep finding out that I've got a lot of common with that I haven't really spent any time um, talking to in great length other than like sort of frantic phone calls. Um is Chris Messina. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was one of the advisors on the Obama iPhone app, but I just found out recently that he's really into comic books as well, and, like, there are other ways in which we have very similar um, interests, and, you know, like, we'll, I was at Scott's house, but missed him there, you know, on phone calls with him, but actually not meeting him, and so... Um, so Tyler and and Chris, like, if we ever get together, I think we'll just have to have, like, a comic book geek out... Maybe go to Excalibur. Maybe we should bring that onto the show. Maybe we should get yeah. the three of you all in the same room and then record the comic book geekery for posterity. Yeah. That yeah. might be good. I think, I, I do believe that Chris has mentioned comic books on the show, too. So yes, he has. A little trifecta yeah. of my comic book. I, I don't collect comic books. I collect the comic book geeks on my show. <laughs> <laughs> my brother collects all the comic books in the Somehow, family. Somehow I got uh, my wife into comic books as well, which mm-hmm. is really nice. Because now, um, and for anyone who is interested in, in uh, reading more books, Multnomah County Library has such a great selection of graphic novels. So um, you can, I mean, basically I, I now manage both my hold list for um, the library and my wife's hold list for the library Mm -hmm. so that I can have more than the 15 total books on hold. That's bad. And um, Game in the library. Yeah, and hopefully there aren't any um, any people on the on the listening to this that are actually also comic book people because um, there's an RSS feed that's just for graphic novels, so you can subscribe and receive notification whenever there's a new one. So mm-hmm. every time there's a new graphic novel, I know about it. I'm able to place a hold on it. Usually, like they'll order eight of them, and I'll be in the first eight, and then I get to read it basically pristine before anyone else messes with it. That's nice. That's good use of your of your funding because then you don't have to buy all the graphic novels. Correct. Correct. Because I would be broke if, if my comic book habit was actually funded out of my own pocket. Oh, yes you would be. Yeah. I know far too well what comic books can do to your pocketbook. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite 
three favorite graphic novels? Oh, um, oh, that's a that's a tough one. And you uh, said you were boring and wouldn't have anything to talk about in I, four hours. Yeah, silly man. Um, I think. I think just as an all-time classic, uh, Dark Knight Returns, Mm -hmm. Um, just, you know, same time as Watchmen, but actually, mm, like, sort of caught, um, I just find it more entertaining. Watchmen's really, really good, but um, it's something that you read in the same way in which you read great works of literature, um, which means that sometimes it's not the most entertaining thing in the world. And you um, don't feel compelled to read it over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Dark Knight Returns, I do end up coming back to. Um, I would say that I have really enjoyed um, uh, Transmetropolitan mm-hmm. and Preacher. That's my favorite of Preacher? all time. Preacher? Uh, Preacher yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I actually have a, a Jesse doll somewhere with the glowing eye. And really? The yeah, my daughter stole it. It's, uh, in her, it's in her action figures, but it's mine and she knows it. Yeah. He's got the boots and he's got the Preacher's collar and the jacket on. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher is, Preacher <laughs> is not a kid's graphic No. Novel. No. And she, neither is Trans... Have you read Trans... I, I haven't. I've seen the cover and yeah. thought I should read that. So, so you have to get into the second trade before you you really start to to love it. Mm-hmm. Um, the first trade, I actually read like two years ago and didn't didn't really love it that much. It came out during the gap when between um, when I stopped reading comic books and sort of, and picked it back up again. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but it's I mean the main character is basically a Hunter S. Thompson type character, mm-hmm. and uh, I. I don't know. For some reason, Hunter S. Thompson also really does it for me. So um, I just love the crazy guy with the bald head running should, around. You should and talk to my brother sometime. He was Hunter S. Thompson for Halloween one year. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the the transfer to Walton character, um, Spider Jerus- Jerusalem is his name, mm-hmm. and he's totally crazy. Mm-hmm. So good stuff. Do they have that at the library? Yes. Yeah, the entire right. thing. I'm going to put it on hold. Have it sent to my library so I can walk over there and get it. Yeah. Dr. Normal, you've had a comic book that you followed. You had a graphic novel that you followed. Which one was it? Oh, so this is a bad question to ask me because I'm not a comic book geek. Am I supposed to come to my camera right now? Is yeah. that my cue? Yeah, why don't you You're cut to You're doing really good on the cue. <laughs> I, I was actually just asking you to answer the question. You don't have to turn your camera on. Well, I just, I'll turn the camera on. I thought you might like to share with us. <laughs> background music and, and all that. Do you need background music to answer a comic book question? Uh, I I would go with background music I, I to think answer a comic any, book question. Anybody questions. should prefer back. I mean, like yeah. in a better world, we'd all like walk around with background music. Yeah, on, exactly. On a on Wednesday, and I'd be able to dunk. <laughs> you to dunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on Wednesday, um, Morgan, PDX, and Verso and I went to go see the the new Harry Potter movie, and we were walking back, and Verso was sharing uh, this very intriguing information she had about the Robin Hood, um, <laughs> not the soundtrack. What's it? What is the the audio? And and the uh, score for it. And that would be the soundtrack. No, well, this, I thought the soundtrack was what you buy. Yeah, no, it might be. It might be the okay. score. Okay. The score. Okay. Yeah. So she was telling us that every time Kevin Costner was on screen, they had to have background music. They had to have his music playing. But they decided um, that when that Alan Rickman, it was detracting from his perform- performance um, to to have music competing with Alan Rickman. And I was like, God, that's just brilliant. Yeah. Alan Rickman never needs to be distracted yeah. from. He was he was the best part of that film. With a spoon. Yes. With a spoon. You don't have a microphone, Morgan. <laughs> yes, he was the be- uh, He's the yeah. only reason I am willing to watch that movie. Uh, so back to my comic books. Yes. Um, <laughs> I was stalling for you. No, I I was fine. Oh, okay, I comic books. Set. What was your favorite? Now tell I'm everyone so where I'm you going used to. I'm to my stylist tomorrow. Jeez. Tell it. I wish you wouldn't dye. <laughs> That's my comment on comic books. I'm so glad I'm going to my stylist tomorrow. I wish you wouldn't dye your hair. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to some blues. Don't don't dye your hair tomorrow, Doctor Normal. Um, so when I was a very little kid, Ooh, the comic we're gonna go books, back that far. I remember like in the late. That's like before the moon 60s, landing. Early seventies, yeah, around the time of the moon landing. <laughs> by the way, forty years, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. Woo woo. Um, 
Uh, I like the Fantastic the Four. Okay. Yeah. I loved. I. Like, so why do you want to dye your hair? You could totally look okay. like. Mr. Reader, yeah, yeah, we're working yeah. on that. I'm trying to keep Doctor Normal from dying anyway, his hair. Uh, the Fantastic Four, and there was probably a Batman <laughs> or a Archie's or who knows thrown in there back in the day. But I, I never was a comic book geek. So like when the Dark Knight came out and all that stuff, I, I maybe just chalk it up to age, women, and drinking. I, yeah. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just wasn't into it. You know. I mean, I, I love when I see good graphic novels. I really appreciate it. But I'm not, um, uh, not into it. In fact, so what happened is. A friend of mine lived down the street from uh, Planet X, was mm-hmm. it, in northwest Portland? Northwest Portland, Portland on oh, 21st yeah. Yeah. in, like, Davis. And what's interesting is By my co-worker, Google. who I share an office with, it's actually a cube. Yeah, we're in all high tech, right? Cube farm. Fiance actually was one of the co-owners of Planet X. I mm-hmm. think I'd met her back in the day. Interestingly enough, they had like a little, they had a dental guy in there one time. I used to live what? down the street from Planet X. Oh. And, and I had vampire fangs custom made at Planet X. Right. Yeah. That was so, awesome. So anyway, Sorry, so. You, you continue. So I went in there with my friend, uh, Brian, a musician, and he's like, oh yeah, they've got the graphic novels. And he was explaining it all to me, manga, and I, I didn't know anything, right? He had the Nintendo and he and his kid played them in Nintendo and they had the... And I was like, I don't, I don't know anything about this. And uh, so we went in there and I said, well, for somebody who doesn't know anything, what, what what's good? You know, what what would I like? And, you know, she talked to me for a while and and uh, I got the Sandman oh, yeah. series. And, and I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. You know, it was kind of cool. But um, unfortunately, you know, I'm not... A comic book guy. I, I appreciate the art and everything. Did you ever read my Preacher series? No. Yeah, you should read it. You'll like it. I, I know where to go if I need to read comics. To my brother's house? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have the Preacher series. You could just read it. I was yeah. death once for Halloween. I know. Death, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing. That's what I liked about the, the Sandman. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much the Sandman. It was death. And then you yeah. married one. I, I was like... Okay, I gotta hook up with that. That's that's that's, that's hard. <laughs> and then you did. And well, no. although no, I didn't have all the big hair on. There's top the whole now, sex but. thing in in graphic novels, and, mm-hmm. and there's a whole manga porn thing. Yeah, which you know, my friend. I had a friend who was had obsessed, of. obsessed with manga porn. Obsessed with it. He would watch it constantly to his wife's dismay. And, and uh, like, once she took all of his DVDs and... I... Say. <laughs> so my That's friend weird. had a, a, a manga porn comic. And it's, I think it was all in Japanese or something. Is it manga or manga? I don't... What is it? It's probably... It probably is manga. Um, I, mean, I studied a year of Japanese. I should know this, but... No, I, I I end up saying manga, okay. um, which curious. I think is incorrect. It's like when Americans say um, karaoke and it's karaoke, but you know, like when you hear it all the time, We're spelled Americans, or Americans. pronounced uh, karaoke, you just get we know nothing to it. about mobile technology. We is can't like pronounce cup, things in Japanese. <laughs> it's not. I'm gonna come over that table and I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> It is not cappuccino. cappuccino. It's not freaking cappuccino. cappuccino. What was I doing when you met me? It's a cup. I was a freaking barista. You can't call it a cappuccino. <laughs> it's a freaking barista when I met you. You can't call it a cappuccino. Right. I would throw this mug cup at you if noodles, I was so cappuccino. fond of it. It works for me, right? No. It's actually it's not cup of noodles. It's, <laughs> it's cup noodles. Oh, interesting. It's cup of soup. It, it was for a while no, in the no, United the States. No, cup of soup. Lipton cup of soup. Yep. In, but for a while in the United States, the it was marketed as cup of noodle, mm-hmm. and apparently that's what everybody became accustomed to, and that's what we've continued to say. But at some point, um, they decided that it, they wanted the branding to be the same, and so mm-hmm. it's cup noodle, um, which is which was really confusing. Actually, I, I've learned so much about 
ramen and about cup noodle than I ever really wanted to. I don't actually eat cup noodle. I that don't was eat my ramen. Question. That was going to be my next question. Do you eat it? Yeah. No. no. Have you eaten it? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I went to college. I've never, <laughs> eaten, I've never eaten cup noodle. Ooh. Really? Ramen, yes. Cup okay. Noodle, yeah. No. I'm freaked out by cup noodle. I'm seriously freaked out. But, I mean, that's probably why I found your talk so entertaining because that, that shit freaks me out. Yeah, I can I can see that. Anything that, like you rehydrate by steaming with boiling yeah. water and then you just put it in your mouth? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where um, having pretty much grown up with cup noodles around, mm-hmm. I never really thought about how unnatural it is. <laughs> Like the like the meat the, heats the in like three minutes. That's like the part when when you're giving the talk about how everything. Oh, and we wanted to have meat in it, and then I have to heat too. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, That's exactly. So horrifying. I to know, me. I know, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. And um, there's oh, a book. There's a book coming out. This guy. So apparently. Um, Oh gosh, Amano-san? I can't remember his name, but the guy who created Cup Noodle and. Um, and ramen and, and that company. Mm-hmm. Um, so in Japan, cup noodle is like they voted it the best invention of the last century. Mm-hmm. And this person it was is ingenious. Yeah, and th- they voted ramen actually. I'm sorry, not cup noodle. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the the person who founded this company is um, really famous. Um, when he died, they filled a full baseball stadium with people mourning at his funeral. I thought you were gonna say filled a baseball stadium with ramen. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Um, and so there's a guy who's writing a book that's all about relationship advice for from um, uh, like basically ramen relationship advice, like <laughs> like <laughs> sayings from this guy, like like as if he's Confucius or mm-hmm. Buddha or something like that, um, which is sense. really really funny. Mm-hmm. So good good stuff. That's kind of creepy. Um, I, I I could imagine that you know it's like if you do not have hot enough water you will have a soggy noodle you know yeah. things like that you know i used to really enjoy ramen but it was a big production in my house because my dad would get the ramen packages and then he would make just the ramen itself but then there would be like the entire cooking of all these vegetables and stuff he would like make this whole oh. vegetable thing to go right, with the right, ramen right. noodles you never ate the ramen just with the with the seasoning pack. Yeah. I love this stuff. I and mean, it came I out when to, I was a kid, and it was just like... When I had my little like tiny heaven. studio apartment, or not studio, little tiny, it should have been a studio, it was so little. You know, one of those ones yeah, that yeah. should be a studio, but they put a door in it. Yeah. And I had barely any kitchen. I took to taking a can of tuna fish, or canned chicken, and frying it up, and like making like... <laughs> the most horrible version of like chow mein in the world with ramen and a it can of tuna. It should have been spam. And yeah, spam. Spam. It spam would have been, been good. It should have been That's spam. That's what they do in the Philippines and in Asia. Yeah, I was Lots a telemarketer. I couldn't afford spam, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. No, seriously, they don't pay, they don't pay the telemarketers very I think Jason's well. lost. <laughs> They don't pay the telemarketers well. He has that look of confusion on his face. (laughs) That was a look of confusion for a moment, but I was trying to remember. I had heard something recently about the spam company, like trying to uh, to like. And they weren't they weren't any longer trying to like take back their name mm-hmm. in relation to junk mail, but they were trying to um, like capitalize on that or something, or like um, the fact that the economy is doing poorly makes them think that that they're going to be able to sell more spam because spam's a sort of thing that people you know like um, they they'll buy in low economies and NPR had some sort of segment on it that was both informative and funny, but I can't remember the particulars of it. Are there any restaurants aside from Montau? that serve spam in Portland? Not that I know of, but you're right. Montage does. Yeah, it's great they, fried they, up for breakfast. They do the spam in Especially their... Especially in a camp? Sp- the, how, I can't remember what they exactly call it, but it's it's, so it's, it's one of their macs with yeah, spam. Yeah. Could be... Sp- do they call it smack? Or, I don't know. <laughs> smack. I don't know. They call it something. <laughs> I need to check the menu next time we're there. Smack? <laughs> what? No, that's, that's something else that happens with people uh, when the economy is bad. <clears throat> that Now, that has never really jived with me. I've never really made sense of the whole, like, when the economy is bad and you have no money, you spend all your money on drugs. I don't get that. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. People, like, they lose their job and then they start using drugs and they lose everything. I thought they lose their jobs. 
job because they're doing drugs. Some people lose their jobs <laughs> because they're doing drugs, but some people do drugs to make them forget that they lost their job. And that makes no sense because where'd they get the money to buy the drugs? You know what I need is that little roll that you watched on TV back in the old, old days. The more you know. Okay, with wait, the music, wait, wait. You know, this is, public, we have to interrupt. Public, uh, it's old Mac with spam. Spold. And they call it spold. That's right. That's Thank you, right. Morgan. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, uh, we used to cook it up uh, in the campfire. When you were a Boy Scout? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put it in there. Boy and Scout. Are you, are you a Boy Scout? No, no. Um, oh, thank you, chat room. Yeah. I know. Not not a Boy Scout. Uh, did Cub Scouts for a while, um, but... I can picture you with a little Cub Scout hat. No. 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 Talk to normal. We've had, actually, we've, we've learned that there are several Is Eagle Scouts. Is he an Eagle Scout? Yes. Oh, wow. And, and I believe our current tally for <laughs> Eagle Scouts on the show are Dr. Normal, Diesel Boy, and Aaron Hockley. Yeah. If, I've, if I've left you out and you've been on the show and you're an Eagle Scout, please do let me know. The Hockley one isn't a surprise, is it? No, it's not Hockley? so much. No, wait a minute. BMW, no? I don't, I don't BMW? <laughs> were you an Eagle Scout? Um, I think, I think, no, Hockley was, because you guys had your whole talk uh, about the Boy yeah, Scout jamboree thing. We'll fact check that and get back to Whatever. The, you know what? The Twitterverse. I'm going to give you a warning now. I want what? you to start getting ready to cue the drink music. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Because I'm going to blame the fact that I may have said I'm someone was ready. an Eagle Scout that wasn't an Eagle Scout on the fact that I'm drinking. Okay, are we, are we doing it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got this queued up here. So what happens during the drink music we just drink? Um, I tell everyone what we're drinking. Oh, I see. And we drink. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. Um, it's... Oh, yeah, you don't have headphones, so you can't hear. It's it's Dr. Normal and John Braz. It's it's their little music. Hey, and we might be releasing that CD pretty soon now that the graphics are done. (laughs) Bite me. The master. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) Bite me. Okay. I'm going to bring a copy of it um, to Michelle on Sunday, I think. All right, great. Yeah. Um, so, yes, now we're listening to the drink music, and tonight it should be no surprise to anyone by looking at our cups. What what camera do we have, camera guy? Ooh, this one. Here, oh. here in close-up. Hold it up. Oh. Yes. We're drinking out of the uh, tiki mugs. Dr. Normal's got the baby eater, but I wanted to point out that Goon has a butt, too. Yeah, I'll show him the baby eater again. Um, we're drinking my big old barrel of tiki drinks. It's got cran raspberry juice, little tiny cutie oranges. It's juiced in there. Lime juice. And then raspberry rum, pineapple rum, coconut rum, banana rum, and dark rum. It's very refreshing on a very hot It is summer. refreshing. Normally we wouldn't turn the air conditioner on in the studio because it makes background noise, but it was too hot down here. Everyone was getting sweaty and pink. Yeah, the, the background noise you hear is uh, air conditioning and other things. So, But it's not too bad. I think it'll be okay. So um, I'm going to show them... Um, because uh, I, I, I love this thing. Yeah, show them the baby eater. Baby eater number one. So I have a tiki drink. Uh, I was drinking tea out of this earlier. Um, this is the special tiki mug from Batch Tiki Bar, Portland, Oregon. And this Yay. is this is when I have to ask, uh, Teresa, if you are in the audience, now that we have baby eater number one, we're kind of starting to get desperate for baby Ooh. eater number two. Do you know when baby eater number two will be ready for us? Because we need them. I don't think she knows. Yeah, I don't know. So we should should we say hi to the? Uh, oh wow! To the chat room. To the to well, the we'll studio say. audience. Oh, studio audience. Oh, there she is. I should point out that Morgan is drinking out of my favorite tiki mug. His name is Fang. That's like an antique. He's a misglaze. He's not an antique, but he's an older tiki mug from Tiki Farm, and he's a misglaze. He was glazed in the wrong color, so he's a very special little guy. Okay, you have a mic now. He's treating me right. Yeah, Fang's a good man. He's a good man. Yeah, and he's got the little Fu Manchu diamond at the bottom. He's very cute. Mm -hmm. He looks like a little dragon or something. He's suiting my mood. Yeah. Suiting my mood. Very, very nice. I think that I think that the music's almost over. I think that we should have a okay. plug fest. I think we should just plug all sorts a of shit. A plug fest? Not Do you know what a plug fest is? I was assuming it would be a time that we plugged a whole bunch of stuff that was coming up in no. Portland. 
<laughs> and a bunch of websites and a bunch uh, of things. A plug fest, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you read the wiki uh, or whatever, um, is uh, a, a time when you go you and multiple up? vendors uh, check their products against each other. He's, Thank he's, you very much. He's correct, actually. Really? What? Can yeah. we change? So, so what would be a time for during the podcast that we talked about all we, the stuff that's happening in Portland soon? We we should with talk, David Tennant. Well, let's start. Yeah, let's talk. We do need to talk about that, and let's turn this music off now. Um, yeah, because I was dancing to the music, but you can't hear it, so it looks <laughs> extra super stupid. So number one, I want to say happy birthday to about us. us. Happy birthday! Yeah. Three years old. I can't sing the happy birthday song because apparently happy you have to pay for about that. Us. So, happy birthday to About Us. I will not sing to you. Yes. That is my birthday gift. You do not have to hear me sing. Uh, about Us has been plug? very kind. I would like to plug... Let's have Jason plug something. Uh, well, we've got Mobile Portland coming up end of the month. Uh, now, is that something you have to sign up for? Or can you just show up? Uh, you could just show up. It would be great if people would um, RSVP on upcoming. Okay. Um, I've gotten to the point after a year and a half of doing these events where I don't freak out when there are only 12 people saying that they're going to show up, and then because usually it's like 30 to 40, Mm -hmm. um, but it still makes me much more comfortable when the RSVP list is is larger, you know, the day of the event, so, um, and then in August we've got, um, we've got another mobile Portland with the phone gap developers who are coming down for British Columbia. And you can find all that information on mobileportland.com. Correct. Correct. Yay. And, uh, Dr. And, Normal. And this week it's your microphone's yeah. not on. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, I was trying to be courteous. Uh, actually with the compressor, I probably don't need to turn it off. Uh, this mobile Portland is the mobilin.org, right? Yeah. You probably already said that, but yeah. It bears repeating. <laughs> do you what want to else? talk about journalism camp? Uh, or do you want to sure. talk about, I could talk about word camp. Why don't you go with, work work backwards. Work backwards, so start yeah. with word camp? Yeah. Word camp is insane. They're going to let Dr. Normal and I talk. I'm, I'm speaking there as well. Morgan, are you, are you speaking? No. Okay. I was going to say, we could have a 444. What, what's your topic? Um, I am talking about how to optimize WordPress for performance. Oh, very important. I'm hoping that you're not talking when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to attend that that talk. Yes. Last week's guest, Tyler, also speaking at WordCamp um, about the portfolio, about how to put your portfolio on WordPress, but I can't remember the exact title of the talk. It's, it's pretty much guaranteed that Tyler and I are talking opposite each other just to continue the tradition. Yeah, they could have all three of us. Yeah. And we could then not be able to attend anything. Yeah. So what are you guys talking about? Hey, Dr. Normal, can you pull up the exact title? Because it, it bears being repeated just really, really specifically. What's the URL? <laughs> this is like WordPress. I think it's WordCamp Portland. Portland. WordCamp Portland 2 P's dot org or dot P. I don't know. Morgan? I'm, I'm pulling it up. Morgan, can you turn Stall around? Stall for time. Morgan, can you just turn around and take care of something for me? I get it. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, I there was some debate this week, right, about whether or not there should be two P's in Word, WordCamp well, PDX. Or yeah, Fortnite. everyone had a hard time with it because WordCamp PDX was spelled with one P. It was WordCamp DX. Yeah. With the P being a capital letter. Yeah, and then, I, I don't like that. I think it's two P's. Well, I think it's good for Twitter. Because, you know, that's one there extra. I could yeah. put an exclamation point yeah. on something. I like I my know. exclamation points. I know, points. I know. Every so character. Every did you want to figure out what the title of our talk is? Let's see. Um, I, uh, I titled it, but I can't it remember Can the exact chaos wording. and Dr. Normal. Bondage, how to be your podcast dom, not its sub. Yeah. That's the title. Oh, I remember that title. I like it a lot. We came up with all sorts of variations on it, and then I stopped. I was making dinner, and I went, wait, wait, wait. How to be its dom, not its sub. And we decided to go with Can I suggest we're more in the sub role right now than the dom? Yes, actually. (laughs) The big kicker will be that we're going to explain to you that there's really no way to completely be its dom. Oh, don't give it away. We're, We're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah, it's a couple Strange of life now. kicks my ass, babies. Um, I think but um, I'm very recent- excited about your talk because uh, it seems like WordPress 
um, often needs a lot of optimization. And it seems like you see these WordPress sites, they get everything, it's pretty, the plugins, everything's so cool. And then you hit the site as a user and it's like, oh my yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, well, and actually this is um, uh, like, Outside of mobile, the, uh, like there are sort of two other areas that we do a lot of work in, and one is um, one is website performance, and the other one is working with standard setting organizations. Standard um, setting organizations. Yeah, like like um, SD card and WiMAX, and so those organizations that do um, that set the standards that you know are on the ports on your computer. But the performance stuff is is something that um, I'm really astonished in, at the fact that a lot of a lot of web developers don't know how to optimize sites to make them run more quickly, um, which is really important for desktop and even more important for mobile. Mm -hmm. So, um, and most of it is stuff that that actual designers or people who are dealing with the front end of websites can actually make make a difference on. Um, it becomes a little more challenging when you're dealing with something like WordPress because you're like, oh, I want this plugin, I want this plugin, I want this plugin. You just grab all these plugins and then, um, you know, each one's throwing JavaScript on the page and throwing its own CSS on the page. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you're done, the whole page is bloated with all this other stuff. Um, but we've we've experimented with a plugin that actually um, it's called PHP Speedy, mm -hmm. um, and you have to do you have to do a little tweaking. Like you can't just plug it in and go like a lot of plugins. Basically, it'll take all of the JavaScript files, pull them all into one file, and compress them and make sure they get cached. Mm -hmm. And do the same thing with the CSS, compress them and make sure they get cached. And so installing that and then turning on gzip for the server, like those two things alone um, can speed up sites like three, four times their their download rate. So on a, on a mobile front, let me ask you what you think of, I can't remember the actual name of it, but it's the, it's the plugin for uh, iPhones and iPods, or what's that special iPod, the Touch? WP it's the, Touch, yeah, what, I believe. Yeah. The WP Touch, and is there anything like that that's generally for mobile sites instead of Apple-specific? Yeah, there's um, there's a plugin that does um, basically the same thing, but converts stuff to what is a very general um, XHTML mobile profile site. Um, and the name of the plugin totally escapes me. But it, it exists. Yeah, yeah. Aaron and I went back and forth a little bit about whether or not we, whether or not I should come talk about, you know, creating sites that are um, Aaron Hockley uh, um, for. Um, Is there any other Aaron on our show? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, for <laughs> mobile or doing the optimization stuff and. It, we were going to do a um, uh, actual workshop at Web Visions on web optimization, and mm -hmm. we didn't get enough people to turn out. And oh, that was the one that got canceled. Yes, that was sad. Yeah, it was very sad. Um, and so, part of the reason for deciding to do the performance one was, you know, we already had some materials, and we're like, you know, this is I, I, like when I was at I was at Storage Networking World. Sorry, we're going back into tech for a second. That's fine. Um, but I was at Storage oh, Networking when World. When were you there? Um, fall of two thousand seven. Um, Which when location? Did, when did I go? Dallas or uh, Florida? It was Dallas. Huh? Were you there? Oh, uh, maybe. Was that Did the I one that was in, also no, in No, I think I was in 08. Okay. Work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, go on. So um, so it was interesting because the, whole, oh, the whole exhibit floor... Was that the one during the election? During the debate. During the... De okay, yeah. yeah. All right, got Obama it. Obama right. and, and yeah. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, so... It was, okay. Yeah. I just I had to have my brain straight. Continue, yeah. please. I was just thinking I could have been hanging out with uh, Jason Yeah, that would have been really nice. Texas Steak, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so we walked out on the floor, and every single booth was about, um, basically, it seemed like you'd walked into an environmental conference, mm -hmm. because every single vendor was talking about green tech, and how their, how energy efficient their servers were, and how energy efficient their things were, and so I finally stopped, and I was talking to somebody, because I knew that the the Storage Networking Industry Association and, like, all these organizations were sort of, like, green storage was a big deal, but I just thought it was because of the buzz, mm -hmm. right? Like, I 
didn't think that it was I mean being a skeptic I kind of thought it was insincere but it's it was really because there are there are data centers in California where they'd like to add capacity and the power department the power utility said no we're not going to give you any more power you're taking too much power um, so data centers have a real issue with this as it is um, so the ability for people who um, who are building sites like to to somehow help by making sure that less resources are being used on the server side actually could be one of the one of the contributing things that they could do to affect the amount of usage the power usage that these data centers use and thus consequently like reduce the amount of energy they need and help the environment um, which is sort of a it's it is admittedly you know kind of some degrees of separation from your actions and actually having an impact. Yeah. But, you know, it makes sites load faster, you know, which is also a benefit. It conserves on bandwidth, which is also a benefit. And it requires less resources, which means that you're using less of the world's natural resources to to power that. Like, it's a win-win all around. Yeah. So why not, um, why not do it when it's actually reasonably easy to do? So that's why... That's why we're going to talk about it at WordCamp. We're going to try to get people to, to hopefully open up their laptops and like make those changes on the fly. Very cool. Morgan? Mm-hmm. Did you have something to say, Morgan? Not really, no. Oh. <laughs> You're just pulling the mic towards you because... Practicing. I see. Very nice. I, I think the discussion was uh, that uh, you were on SharePoint. <laughs> yes, yeah. I am in SharePoint hell. Yeah. So, uh, if you need any WP or uh, whatever it's called, I can help you with that, but don't ask me to because I don't want to. Are we talking about, because is, is tomorrow in bloglessness too? Yes. Oh. Are you going to be at in bloglessness too? For a bit, yeah. yeah. I'll be what? out there helping. So, what is in bloglessness? <laughs> <laughs> What is in bloglessness, you ask? Right, it's an unnatural off. word. <laughs> Jason it is unnatural. Jason Grisby is cut off. <laughs> you know what, so no. There are some things that are hard to say, like read, write, web. I have to slow down 20 <laughs> miles just to say read, write, web. I can't say read, write, web. Hey, See? Hey, Le- oh, my Leo God, I said it. it. Never got I'm it right. Right. I said it. Did you hear me say it? Read, write, no. web. Read, write, web. Yeah. It's two R's and a W. That's how you say Read, it. Write, Do um, not spell it in your head. You think R R W, not R W W, and you'll get it right. That's the secret. Oh, really? Read right web. I always think R W W. No, yeah. R R W. Yeah. Read right web. See, there look, I said it very I quickly. Told, <sighs> it's a great name. It's just hard to say. So anyway, just like magic. It's winter in New Zealand, by the way. Uber. <laughs> It's very, it's very warm down here. What was I talking about? Uh, no, the end blogness. End bloglessness. It's Thank unnatural you. to say. Yes. It is unnatural okay. to say. It's unnatural. So the first end bloglessness was to help people who didn't have a blog or who were having trouble getting their blog set up mm. get set up blogging so that everyone could have a blog so that they could then attend beer and blog. I see. It was a raging because, success. Because there's it there's so success. much blogging that happens at Beer and Blog. A lot. Have you ever blogged from Beer and Blog? I have. The you early have? multiple the, times. The early no. Beer and Blogs that I went to were mm-hmm. were um, much you know, more like, work oriented. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. Now it's just an excuse to drink beer. Yeah. And in my case, a martini. I don't drink beer. But. So in bloglessness is to help people. You can get a martini at Green Dragon. Yes. No. Yes. Oh, shit. Yes, and they have wow. really good... What's the name of their... Three Rivers? Bourbon? Three Bridges? Yeah, Three Bridges. They do have bourbon. They have they have a full bar. Wow. Or is it 12 Bridges? Wow, wow. It's 12 wow. Bridges? It may be 12 bridges. bridges. It's 17 okay. Bridges. They're, they have they have gin that they make there on the facility, if I'm not mistaken. Don't they make it in that big room with the... I don't know. They make it special for... Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, they have a full bar. Okay. You can order booze there. All right. I didn't know that at first. At first, I thought it was that's just a that, beer place. Yeah. Okay. And I was always like, maybe I get a cider. And then one day, I realized that there were a bunch of liquor bottles, and it's like, oh, I'm home. Yeah, I probably should look behind the bar. That probably would be. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. it's it's. So, normally, it's hard to get to the bar. So. So you're having a martini. Yes. And writing a blog at Beer no, and Blog? No, I've never no. blogged at Beer and Blog. Gotcha. Yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> Too no. busy drinking a I've martini. I've touched a computer at Beer and Blog once or twice. Yeah. Oh, hi, 
it's kind of hard not to. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. So what is so what's and happening bloglessness. tomorrow? Yes. Um, this time they're focusing more on WordPress because they figure that way if they get people started on WordPress, it's a format that everyone in the Portland community is then able to help other people with. Okay. Um, and because I'm guessing because WordCamp is coming up, and then if right. they need to, they can go to WordCamp and right. they can listen to one of our brilliant talks. When when is WordCamp again? September something in the teens. Okay, I, and I you know it seems like I was being <laughs> a straight man, sort of like setting you up for that, but I actually I, I couldn't remember September. when I'm when I'm supposed to be speaking. Yeah, so. no, I'll tell you. It would be second. September nineteenth. Okay. Uh, through the 20th. Uh, 20th. Oh my gosh. So September Web 19th Trends. and 20th at Web Trends. That's so right. so it starts on International Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> Yar, baby. Yar. Yar. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. Now I know how to format my talk better. Yeah, depending on the schedule, like we we may have to dress up in costume for our presentation. I have an awesome pirate costume. Wait a minute, that's not during the Pirate Festival, is it? Oh crap, it better not be during. Well, if it's during the. We have a kid. We have. We we'll are have like on our bound to take our child to the pirate festival. Have you ever taken your daughter to the pirate festival? No, no. She's not yet. maybe a year from now. She'll be ready. Okay. Captain Bog and Salty plays at the pirate festival. Is it? Is it? I mean, it would make sense for it to be around the same time as the International Talk Like a Pirate Day. I, I don't know. I, I think it's. God, for some reason, I, I want to say it's right before school starts and school yeah. have already started. I need to mm. look up the dates because we'll, we'll figure that out. We're not plugging pirate. Festival I'm plugging right the now. Pirate Festival. The no, Pirate Festival is something that you should go to. Word camp I don't have here. the information for it, but you should go to the Pirate Festival. <laughs> word camp up it's here at Cathedral at Park. Bloglessness. I see. Speaking of things, we need, at what Cathedral we need, Park. what we need is instead of the end blogness. I, can't, I just can't say it's that like word. It's like me in the read right web, yes. which I can say now yes. because of Mike's magical explanation. Yeah. Well, I could use one for the the whatever the thing is that's ending. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like I, I think we need one that's that's like um, the equivalent of Don's like get off your butt mm-hmm. um, tag hashtagging, but it's like in you know like. like you know, you've got a blog, but you've been neglecting, you know, the neglected child blog. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that... I've got two of those, which is really sad. My Cami Chaos blog, which I used to write daily, like, every single day. And at one point, Dr. Normal had to say, no more posting on the weekends. I would like to have a relationship with my wife. Wow. No more weekends. And that was a year ago. And now I'm, like, lucky if I post once a week. I'm like, do, do, do. Oh, I should post something? Maybe. I'll, I'll think about that while I'm Twittering. <laughs> yeah. I think Twitter has killed my blog. Yeah. It does that, I think. Yeah. Um, that and that and the desire to uh, to sort of actually, like, like have... Like, for me, it's 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 these, um, these sort of, like, complicated arguments that I want to make or, like, sort of, like, um, oh, I need to talk about this so that I can talk about this thing that I'm thinking about now, but there's, like, I need to tell the... I need to have like the supporting material, <laughs> and so like so like I need to blog on a more so regular basis so that I can brain. like reference stuff. Uh-huh. But then I don't do it, and then the blogs just end up like you know the blog posts are sitting there in the admin section as drafts. See my blog, but, but you blog at Cloud Four though. I do, but not not to the degree that I should, not to the degree that I want to. Like she's uh, a slacker blogger. Yeah, exactly. Oh wow, that was a strong pocket. Okay, so. Uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day is September 19th. Yes. Yeah. Word Camp Portland is September 19th and 20th. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see some asses so in pirate costumes. So land loving asses need to get down to the Cathedral Park? I don't know when the... Does, can you we'll, tell when the we'll Pirate Festival is? Can you I'll look that up? We'll um, look that um, up. Cathedral Park is uh, where the Pirate Festival is held. But speaking of things I'll in Cathedral up, Park, yar. this weekend, uh, starting today, tomorrow and Sunday, is the Jazz Festival at Cathedral Park. And if you're like, oh, yay, that's nice, but I'm not going to go, I want you to think about this. John Nastos will be performing uh, with, uh, with a band, and the name of the band escapes me right now, uh, at 2 p.m. on Sunday. And there's going to be a Twicknick at Cathedral Park in order to watch this. Right. Okay. And, I, and I will I be there. A family reunion on Sunday. Um, the so why don't we talk about one evening. more thing? And Journalism then we've, camp? Yeah, we've used up our hour giving giving everyone the events of Portland. He, he was afraid we'd um, have nothing to talk about. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> uh, longer term, I just wanted to plug 
the journalism camp. Shorter right? term. Longer Shorter term, term would be farther know. away. Well, it's, it is farther away. No, no. Oh, no, it's short term. It's, it's, in, it's in like in two oh, weeks. It's in two weeks. It's Crap. very soon. All right. So what's this one? This is a digital, journal, digital journalism camp in Portland. At, at the Oregonian. At journopdx.wordpress.com. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are signed up for it, like 90 people on upcoming. It's journalism, journalists and bloggers you, and podcasters. Are you affected by the inability no. to speak? It's a journalism uh, camp. Digital journalism yes. camp. It's called Delay it in the It would be embarrassing if I mispronounced that when I was being all pissy and matter of fact. Um, so the... It's up there on the website. Check it out. Upcoming, uh, our guest next week will be Abraham Hyatt. Hi, Abraham. Who is the organizer of mm -hmm. this? And tell us a little bit more about it. And that's going to happen. Registration is going to close in about a week and a half. It's going to so. close on the twenty seventh. Yeah. So listen to the show Friday. Listen to what Abraham has to say here about journalism camp. Uh, it's going to be a full house full of some really entertaining people yeah. and some great speakers. I married to one of them. Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about... What, what is Dr. Normal speaking about? Dr. Normal, what are you speaking about? Uh, He's on a panel of some sort and talking about something. I'm going to talk about podcasting. Okay. Yeah, and also Aaron Aaron uh, Weiss is going to be yeah, I, uh, yeah. talking. I don't think we have it all. I mean, it's a non-conference, right? It's a camp. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll see what happens, but we're going to talk about... Uh, I'm just, I'm not a journalist, so I'm just going to talk about kind of the tools of yeah, the trade. Yeah, but it's the digital journalism podcasting. and how it relates to now. How you do all this, you yeah. know, and right. what kind of software to use and what you have, what services and software and all that sort of thing. That's great. That's very cool. At least that's cool. the plan. Hey, did anyone hear Aaron's talk last night, though? Because I really laughed. I love the whole don't yeah. call it a newscast oh, yes, bit yes. of that talk. That was yes. very entertaining. I heard all the talks. Yeah, because yeah, you were I, there. Were I, you there? Yeah. Yeah. Who was yeah, the? It was Ignite. Uh, so six. Abraham Hyatt wasn't the guy who did the um, the revised commencement address, right? No, yeah, it was Andrew Berkowitz. Okay, thank you. Who's yeah. got the same last name as a speaker from? Yes. O.S. Bridge, who talked about assholes. That's right. And now that we've so name dropped and done links for about ten minutes now, now and lost our sometimes audience. it's important to tell people what's going on. Yeah, and that I think that that's Tiki Mug plenty. has an ass. Um, so what else uh, do we got going on? What what sort of thoughts do we want to leave with the uh, audience as we start to roll out of after hours? Mm. Walter Cron Cronkite it's died. Dead. It's dead. Like, he died let's today. Have a moment of silence for Mr. Cronkite. Yeah, it's bad drink during that moment of silence to you Mr. Cronkite. Which is interesting because 40 years ago it was the moon landing and one of his famous uh, 40 reels years ago on the 20th. Oh yeah. And I know that basically. because happy anniversary mom and dad. My mom and dad have been married okay. for 40 years. So they launched uh, they launched the day the Endeavor launched right? I believe. Whatever. I have no idea. Bob Jason, Luba knows what day they launched. Dig us out. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, say something fascinating. Go. No pressure. Uh, the last time I was at my family reunion, I found out that a coworker um, was a cousin of mine. Wow. Yeah. A coworker at Cloud Four? Uh, at Covey, yeah. Oh wow. No. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's that reminds me, I should have. Hopefully, it's not a coworker. I should have asked that you Betsy to ask embarrassing point, questions. Right? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> That's always uncomfortable. <laughs> That would be uncomfortable in so many ways. <laughs> oh, what? Like, we're related? Married. First yeah. cousin or yeah. third cousin? Hey, Dr. Know. Normal, not everyone is you. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Blue, I would just said that to my own husband. That's kind of creepy. Oh. It's not kind of creepy. That was just creepy. So I'm, I'm hoping to, to go there and uh, and not find out that any any that I have any other relations that I don't know about. Although yeah. it was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. That was a zipper. <laughs> yeah. Dr. So Normal. Morgan <laughs> he has a very long Hands zipper. <laughs> where, where is your family oh, reunion geez. located? Is it in Portland? Or it's, are you going no, it's, to uh, it? it's uh, normally it's camping. It's um, down in um, a Fisherman's Bend, which is a campground outside of uh, Salem. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but they for some reason I guess they couldn't get the weekend, so the family reunion is like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So I'll just be there on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the one day, but is it the same location? Yeah, most most years. So if yeah. you really want to fuck with Jason, just show up and tell him that you're his second cousin. <laughs> yeah. That would be that, that would not be nice pretty. Of me. That'd be pretty crazy. I should not be allowed to talk at eleven fifty five at night, people. After. 
That's oh, definitely crap. I just don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I think with that, and we man. should just giggle and have the show be really? over. Yeah. What else? What else? Anything? Anything? Abraham else? Hyatt's on the show next week. That's right. We talked about that. I, we, <laughs> we we spent like forty five minutes of after hours talking Morgan about keeps what putting the, the microphone hell is up happening to her mouth, Morgan. like she wants to talk to us. Morgan, do you need to hang on? Hang on? Hang on? <laughs> Jeez, it's all falling apart. <laughs> it's just a big fat it's mess. Crumbling. Here. I would just like to say. I'm the studio audience. <laughs> that is that is absolutely yes. true. Morgan, you're the studio audience, Me, but myself are, and I. Are you the studio audience with a spoon? I always have a spoon because what? with a spoon, everything's better. Oh, this does. It's true. Uh, it's I the know. newest hashtag. It's the hashtag with oh. a spoon. Is this like back to the '70s, the disco era? Hey, with no, spoon. it's a mashup between our love of Alan Rickman and our love of the oh, tick. Freak. <laughs> And The Matrix. Oh, and The Matrix. That's because right. Because then there is no spoon. Yeah, so we've got Alan Rickman, The Matrix, and The Tick. All things are connected. All things are connected. What? What's the, the Tick quote? I got to back away from my microphone. Spoon! <laughs> <laughs> That's his battle cry. Gosh, I do not remember that. Was um, that from the live action or the comic? or Comic book and cartoon. Comic book and cartoon. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'd That never was the read. other graphic novel. So really I've, I've, not, I've not read The Tick comic book. You should. I, I probably it's good. should. Wow. Have you seen the live action? Yes, I have okay. the DVD of the live action and yeah. of the cartoon. I've seen so one. I've not seen the. See. I've not seen the cartoon, but I've I've uh, seen the live action mm-hmm. on Netflix. It's really really funny. Season one and two of the cartoon are available on Netflix now. Okay. So. Yeah, season one was streaming, which was really nice. Or the of the, of the um, live action. I love that. Who does anyone else partake of the? See, Dr. Normal doesn't use it, but he could. The, the streaming Netflix. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It, it I was a, little, I was a little disappointed in the fact that it doesn't, um, that, like, there are a lot of movies that you can get checked out that you can't get via the streaming. You can't. And uh, and then and then I realized that we've got a two-and-a-half-year-old, and I can't watch the stuff that I want to watch when... She's around, so like we're exactly. just not watching. We're just not watching yeah. enough to really justify Puts it. Puts a so. cramp in your movie. But viewing. there's a lot. There's a lot of good children's material on Netflix. That was my problem with Hulu because we don't have cable. Yeah. And uh, our daughter likes to watch TV. Right. Every, she's a every kid. movie I've watched lately or gone to the theater is a kids' movie, with the exception the exception. Sorry, the headphones drive me crazy here. Of Star Trek. Which Star Trek was it was oh. okay to take our kid. We to wa- Star Trek. we went and watched it on a date night to go see Star so Trek, good. Yeah. and then we decided that okay, the violence isn't too bad. We'll take our daughter to go yeah. see it. I saw it we've had times. a couple of date nights. We've got to see Star Trek twice, and we've actually we got to see uh, the the Hangover. I haven't seen the yeah. Hangover. No. That was really funny. Are you Harry Potter people? Uh, Dana is. I am not. Be a man and take Dana to go Are see it, or or people. she can go with people. me. She, she I'll take her to me. go see I, it at my know. local theater. I don't know if she's really. I mean, she just she's read a couple of the books. She's not read them all. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried to get through the first book, and I, you know, I'm sorry, I thought it was pretty poorly written. Wait till your daughter's older and read it to her. Yeah. <laughs> Poorly, all right. Morgan, Morgan has Good. not read Thanks any of that. the Harry I'm Potter so books. I'm so sick of no, no, Harry Potter and everything. I, I so, mean, no offense, but so like, this is only important uh, to people who have read the books or seen the movie. Uh, Morgan has never read any of the books, <laughs> and so the big thing that happens in this movie, she didn't know it was going to happen. Okay. Well, it was kind of. It was you know, obvious. Hello, foreshadowing. The Plus, I gave her Kleenex right before. Just <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm looking. Oh, so I thought I thought a it was like. I mean, because he's like he's like, he's like no growing spoilers, up, right? No like, well, I I haven't read the books. Oh, okay, I haven't seen so the movies. Is, is I just I thought Harry maybe Potter? like his, he about got his cherry popped or something like that. I mean, like <laughs> no, it's not like that. I'm gonna do a huge spoiler. Potter does not get his cherry popped. I thought, I thought <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Is it oh. is it is it Harry Potter? Is it like uh, Weasley does. young Spock meets old Spock or something? <laughs> Weasley does not get his cherry popped. No, he, he gets to uh, snog. He gets to snog. He doesn't get to. Get they don't snog. Just, well, like, also, what else could snog mean? I have to say that was a really an <laughs> ugly face. I, I think snogging just means making out. Yeah, oh, okay. But I thought over it was, the clothes. Okay, yeah. I thought that was that was like another Harry Potter term. So I but did that's too. Just, but that's just me. I'm pretty like, sure snogging just means making. Out. Um, Martin, if you're listening to this show, Martin, if you're listening to this show, you're British, so I expect you to uh, DM me and let me know if yeah. snogging is just making out or if 
it's also fucking. I need okay. to know. Because then we, well, but well, so I have to say, I thought it was really awesome that this magical little Kleenex <laughs> appeared on my leg right around the time that this certain incident was starting to commence. See, and here's I looked the thing. Down, and I'm like, oh look, I guess I'm going to need this. Uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> here's the so, thing. So I know it's not, I said it's I not was... the tissue that's in your hand, and you're talking about in the theater. Yes. Okay. So I'm in the theater. Here's the thing. I know and that a magical I said. Little Kleenex appears on my lap. I know I said I was off. Off mom duty, <laughs> but let's face it. Yeah, I, I went out. No off switch. I went out with Verso and Morgan PDX to see Harry Potter. We went out. We had drinks. We had dinner. We went and saw Harry Potter, and and part way through the movie, I found myself pulling out my little package of Kleenex and handing one to Verso, and handing one to Morgan, and realizing, shit, I'm totally mothering them. It was very sweet. Yeah. Okay. I love my peoples. And that's your Harry I don't, Potter I hate podcast everybody. for. Cammy Chaos hates the world. Okay. That's. <laughs> oh, Lord. I think we should say goodnight to everybody. Yes. Yeah, on that note, the Harry Potter <laughs> podcast for July 17th is over. It's July Stay 18th. Stay tuned next now. time when we discuss David Tennant and Doctor Who all day. David Tennant. Hey, yeah. it's been a while since we talked about David Tennant. And yeah. he's no longer and, Doctor Who, for and, the record. And during the Harry Potter talk, I was kind of missing the uh, David Tennant Doctor Who talk, believe Wait, it or not. He's not Doctor Who anymore. If you could actually believe that. Did so, you guys, have I ever mentioned that the back of his suit coat is not pinstriped, but the rest of his suit is? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> of humanity. <laughs> That's I'm a girl cool nerd. For you. Girl I mean, nerds like Dr. Seriously. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. What a beautiful letdown. And what there goes the show. Music. <laughs> I enjoyed talking to all of you this evening. Please join us next week with Abraham Hyatt. When we talk about digital journalism camp. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Jason. Good night. Thank you, Jason. Thank you.